Well, this time I'm going to demo another version of the um, blue box that I built based on my 12F683 design. And this one I designed to look like the blue box that was illustrated in the 1971 October Esquire article. So um, I used a little bit bigger button, so it's not a perfectly faithful reproduction, but it does kind of come kind of close. So here's the original illustration of the blue box, and um, I tried to kind of replicate that as much as I could with the same uh, size box and the push button on top and the kind of clunky push buttons on there instead of a, a nice keypad like I've used for some of my other designs. So by and large it works pretty good. I did find by that uh, by using these big grungy Chinese push buttons that I got from eBay there was quite a bit of contact bounce on them compared to a nice keypad so I did have to add a debounce routine otherwise every time you pushed it you'd hear about two or three tones or else the wrong tone which is even worse. But now I've, uh, I've got it working pretty good, so we'll just do a quick demo. I don't want to replicate everything from my other video, but we'll kind of demonstrate how it works. This uh, one, what I did is I added a jack on the top, and I've got an um, earpiece from an old Western Electric 500 desk set hooked up on it. There's a toggle switch on the side for control. There's a button for each one of the digits, and a button on top for 2600. So I'll turn it on. And when I turn it on, it powers up in MF mode. As you can see, I've got the debounce uh, algorithm working really good. There's really zero false triggering now, which is not the case with the old code. So it was a good improvement and a good optimization on the code. The, the top plays 2600 at a one and a half second fixed, inter, uh, fixed duration. If I want to change to DTMF mode, I turn the box off, I hold down the 2600 button while switching it on, and now I'm in DTMF mode. So those of you with uh, good ears can hear that I'm now playing DTMF. If I turn it off, back on again, I go back to the stored mode in, uh, in the uh, flash memory, which is MF mode. Now if I want to change the, uh, the default power up, I can hold down the asterisk key, or the lower left button in this case, turn on the power, then I'll turn off, back on again, and now I'm powering up in the opposite mode. So I can toggle power up modes by holding down the, um, the lower left button on power up, and then we'll power cycle, now I'm back to MF mode. The lower right key, uh, the pound key, on a normal keypad uh, will toggle the duration of the individual tone digits from a default of I think 70 milliseconds to 120 milliseconds. That works for both the manual and playback modes as we'll see. So hold that down, turn it on, and now the tones are longer duration. And that is persistent, there's no temporary setting for that. Uh, so that stores in the flash memory and then is read at power up. And we'll turn it back to the short duration. Now the neat feature of this box, and something the original probably never had, is uh, 32 memories to store dialing digits, or dialing sequences. So for each one of the keys on the, on the front keypad, there is a memory location that will store 32 digits. Now the way this works is when you first power up the box, a RAM buffer will store the first 32 key presses. So in this case, I'll dial a simple uh, directory assistance 131 code. Key pulse, 131 start. Now to save that, which is now stored in the RAM buffer, to save that buffer off to memory, uh, I can press and hold any one of these 32 digits. So in this case we'll store it to memory 0 here. So I'll press and hold it. Two beeps play. The first beep indicates the start of the write and the longer beep indicates the end of the write and a successful write to, uh, to flash. So now what I'll do is I'll change from manual mode, which we're in now, to uh, playback mode. And to do that, I press and hold the 2600 button for uh, three seconds. And that low to high beep confirms the change to playback mode. 
Now if I hit any of these other keys, there's nothing stored, but if I press the zero key where we've just stored that sequence, it'll play back. And I can toggle back to manual mode by again pressing and holding the 2600 key. Now I can change the duration and that will also be reflected in the playback mode. So let's power off, change the duration. We're at 120 milliseconds. I'll toggle to playback mode by holding that down. We're in playback mode and now when I play it, and we'll power off and on and we're back in manual mode now. Now let's go into uh, temporarily DTM, uh, M, uh, DTMF mode. So we'll hold down the 2600. Now we're in temporarily toggling to DTMF mode. Now I just put in a random dialing sequence. This time let's store it to memory three. Right, we've stored it. Now we'll switch to playback mode. So memory three is playing it back at the slower rate, uh, since that's what we had programmed. And this is MF mode, or uh, MF sequence. So it's possible to mix MF and DTMF modes in separate memories, but not within the same memory. So we'll go back on our fast speed, go back into playback mode. So with uh, two dialing speeds and two duration, tone durations are supported by the, uh, by the box. It's also possible to store 2600. We'll do that quickly. We'll press the 26, turn it on, press 2600, key in a dialing sequence. Store that to memory uh, five. Twenty six hundred. There's a one and a half second delay built in to the um, after the uh, twenty six hundreds play to allow time for the wink back from the trunk and then the digits play. That's fixed and can't be changed. So that's it. Uh, kind of a pretty good replica of the original twenty six hundred box using some very modern, <coughs> very modern circuitry.